Hi everybody, it's Lone from Lone Scratch Designs. I'm going to do a goddess pendant today. Not done one of these in a hot minute. These are the frames. I'll link up above where we did these um, frames out of polymer clay. These were just some little metal frames that I picked up at a yard sale or something. Um, little bitty metal frames. They were all made out of the same metal. They were all from a little set. But you can also use these are frame molds with dog hair that just came from I think these were from Amazon, but they could have just as easily been from Timu, Wish, wherever. Feel free to use something like that. Today, we're going to use this little frame mold. Okay. And not that one. this little face mold this is one that I re-sculpted from that used to be a sculpy face mold they don't carry it anymore but that's one that I re-sculpted okay Now, the first thing I'm going to do is this is just some black scrap clay. This is one of the cool tools, texture sheets. I actually figured out what it says. This one is the Naga Hide. I'm telling you the feels. My dad, who just passed away in 2021, was an upholsterer. Well, besides, he was a fireman. He was a fireman, and then on the side, he was an upholsterer. My grandfather owned a upholstery shop um, on the north side of Fort Worth. And... Um, they specialized in like um, car. Okay, I won't say car interiors, but mm, how would you say that? Sports car? No, 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 no. Vintage car interiors. There you go. Um, jet plane interiors. That sort of thing. It was a little bitty upholstery shop, but it was a big clientele they had. Anyway, we had a couch that my dad upholstered. Uh, 60 something, maybe. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and it was yellow, green, and white. Kind of a floral print. Embossed Nagahide. Oh my lord. It was horrible. It was horrible. I hated it when I was a kid. I couldn't imagine somebody actually choosing that to put on their couch. <laughs> okay. Uh, 
Okay, now. Just for the grins of it. Let's put a little bacon bond on the back of this frame. Okay. Uh, last thing my husband said when he walked out the door was, Man, it's hot this morning. And you know when it's hot, my bacon bond does not want to run. Let it be cold. Different story. Alright. Yeah. Now you can tell what kind of scrap this really is. But that doesn't matter. Okay. Okay. Now I'm just going to cut out around that. Sorry for this. Let's take a large jump ring. Right. I want this to be the top. Okay. Now we're just going to bake that 275 for 30 minutes. Alright. Then I'll be back. And I'm not going to bake it on the tile. As you can see, we've already flattened down that texture just a bit. So let's do a little bit to repair that. Okay, now then, we'll bake that. I can bake it on the tall. I just have to bake it frame side down. That already baked side down. But what I will probably do is bake it on a piece of paper. Okay, because I want that back to lay a little flatter. Okay, now, just like that. Okay, now, I've put the rest of that piece of scrap on the back of this face. But I don't need to add a bit of bacon on Alright. Now. Let's add another bit. Just because this base is already baked. And okay, I just want something to... Stick it down. a slight tilt or 
be straight. Let's make her straight. Because she is framed almost like a portrait. Alright, now we could bake that. Just like it is. So it would at least stay put. But, you know, I'm a maverick, right? I'm not going to bake it first. But I am going to let it set for just a couple of minutes to let that... That bacon bond will kind of uh, firm up. It'll kind of seep down into that polymer clay that's still raw. And that'll help it stay put a little bit. Alright. Five minutes maybe. This is just some black Primo rolled out on a four. I didn't want it too thick. It would add too much weight. But I still want it thick enough to uh, be able to put some texture and stuff in. So, the way I normally do this is I look at the piece and imagine in my mind the way I want the hair to flow. Okay? That will distract me. <laughs> All right. Now, cross the top of her head. Okay. Just something like that. Okay. Now, of course, I'll have to put some bacon bottom behind it and stuff. Just checking the fit. Alright, other than where I went back and sliced it right there where I didn't really need to. Yeah, I like that. Okay, I'll, lots of other things like I'll need to smooth the edging down a little bit so it doesn't look quite just like such a cut piece. Although it is. Alright. Okay, now, if you look at it this way, that is layer one. And what I normally do is I layer up the hair. Alright, so we're going to ignore how it looks right now, actually. <laughs> this is a furring tool. Alright, used to make uh, fur on uh, mm -hmm, ceramics. Follow the movement. 
of the piece. Okay, just like that. Now it's ready, you can cut the next piece. Okay, I've got a little ball tool here. What I want to do though, I'll lift these flowers up and put them on my mat. <laughs> my fingers stickier than my mat. Okay, for the moment. Now, I'm going to take one of these little flowers here. I'm going to put a little dot there in the middle of that, though. Now, it doesn't look like anything yet. I've got to put one right there. Put this one right here. I'm going to stick it down here. Hey. It's going to need a touch of bacon wand. Either way, isn't it? Come on. Operate. Now then. Okay. And we're going to do the other one the same way without the dog hair. Stick that down though. You need to deal with those leaves. There's my needle tool. This is Sculpey. It has a different design now, but it's the same difference. And let's just have a few little scant veins. I'm afraid again with the Bacon Bond. Or it's just not going to stick. Although, I'm actually not too sure we actually need those leaves. Now 
we're not gonna want that flower necessarily sticking out there. <clears throat> now we just need a couple of dots. Two in the middle of that one. All right, now I really do still want. Just like a piece of bread with peanut butter on it, isn't it? And the reason it flops upside down is scientific, by the way. Not just to annoy you. Same thing goes with cheese toast or... heavier on the top side it's gonna fall top side down there How dare you mess up my flower Okay, here it is out of the oven, and I have put a coat of black gesso on the whole thing just because the face was white, and I knew I wanted to put some. These are the metallic waxes. Metallic waxes. Art, Aca Art Academy. Art Alchemy. Huh? Art Alchemy by Finnebar. It's a Prima product. They just came out with a new winter release. I gotta say, I want them all. <laughs> Alright. Now, I brought out both of the... This is the aged brass. This is the vintage gold. Because I wasn't quite sure which one I wanted. thinking it's the aged brass but let's check mm, yeah aged brass
Okay, I'm gonna go for the aged brass first. Just because it's my short fingernail. Okay. Now, that was just to add a little highlight. Okay. to the black okay now we'll just need to let that dry off a little bit evaporate off a little bit and you just want it to do that because we're going to be putting some more colors on top okay let's go with this is the rose gold I suggest you leave that it's more like a plastic actually but I would suggest you leave that in there see this one now that's not mold okay that's just where some of the ingredients okay are migrating to the top just like that oily looking it a waxy looking if if it gets too bad you can just take a paper towel baby what and just wipe the surface surface off okay now really I want a little bit I know it's hard to see because it's the same color as my finger Okay, this one is from the Antique Brilliance line. The difference in this one is that it is a brown wax, an antique wax with the colorant in it. Okay, so if you put this on a white piece, you're going to get that brown wax with just the tiniest hint of that green but when we put it on black this is just a dedicated brush Okay, now this one is the white gold. Okay, it's got kind of a champagne kind of look.
just barely barely Y'all know I love my Prima waxes. Once they dry, they are permanent. Not like, not like the Inca Gold. When you try to put a sealer on, it just moves all that work you just did. The Prima waxes are permanent. You can't, you cannot wash them off. <laughs> now, if you hit it right, literally right away with alcohol, that'll remove it. But, don't wait too long. Uh, that is beautiful. Alright, I've got... <clears throat> This is one of the bales that I got off at Timu. This is from the gold collection. Set, whatever you want to call it. This one. <laughs> okay. Now, that is a real jewelry finding. It is not just some metal plated plastic that is heavy weighty but this tiny little jump ring yep just what I thought that's a six Okay, then I've got this as a waxed cord. Now, <clears throat> when you do this, you want the bale to run perpendicular to your piece, not parallel. Now, the only other thing I didn't say was that face was resin. I don't know whether it was PU resin or epoxy resin, but either way. When you get the safety data sheet, what you want to read is the cured heat tolerances, okay? Most resins are heat safe to polymer clay temperatures. If they're not, you'll know it right away. Okay. I have been <laughs> baking resin with polymer clay for 10 years, maybe more. Oh, I love it. 
I love it. It's so pretty. Alright, y'all. If you do not use the Prima line of waxes, try them out. That new winter collection, I'm telling you, just literally just launched, like, this week. It's gorgeous. And I want them all. I have, I think there's like maybe two, two colors I don't have, maybe. Oh, no, there may be four colors I don't have. The new, the last release, huh, last time, they did a matte, um, color release. Rust and, like that. Old white is a matte white wax, okay? This one is charcoal black. You'd never know that by, huh? All the leakage. Rusty red. I think there's actually a couple more. Um, but that whole line. I think there may be two of them I don't have. Or, mm, maybe two of them I don't have. And then two of the other maybe yeah maybe these mm -hmm. the wax series Sarah uh -huh. there's like a a bright pink and something else Maybe a bright purple or something I don't have. I don't know. But anyway. I'll show you. The difference in these greens. Is amazing. Okay, this is the Antique Brilliance one. That we just used. Called Lucky Emerald. Okay. This one is the Mint Sparkle. Now, on white, yes, it does have a mint color. On black, it has the prettiest green, gold. It, it's undescribable. So pretty. If you have not invested. Now these don't come. Don't get excited. These don't come. In these tubs anymore. They now come. In these tubes wasn't really happy about it but they didn't ask me so and I'm sorry the matte waxes were not the last release this one was the per the white pearl what else there was rusty brown now that is from the matte collection and the patina blue so maybe it is still just two that i don't have anyway get you some of these They have so many uses. Not just on polymer clay. 
Alright. I've got a Amazon shop that I'll get a little kickback from if you order anything through that link. I do have some of the older lines of these metallic waxes. The Prima ones. Um, let me think. I believe that's all. Please like, share, and subscribe. <laughs> like everybody's video you watch all. Including this one. Thank y'all so much for watching. Bye for now.